Hello, it's me, Thought Soap, the clean boy who likes clean things. I make a lot of videos, 52 a year to be precise. That's not including videos on Scaredy Cats or the newly formed Mega Slime Entertainment Zone. Not counting streams or bonus videos or whatever. If I met my full obligation of videos this forthcoming year, I would produce 469, nice, videos where I'm always talking and shooting off my big mouth. You can imagine that sometimes this makes some people wonderfully, impotently angry at me. I made a video like three years ago about ANCAPs, and to this day, I get new response videos that incoherently try to dispute it without addressing any of the points I made. I've had many ANCAP stalkers because of that video, which I don't understand because, as my video is more popular than any of the videos which responded to it, by their logic and the laws of the market, it is therefore the superior video. They should be thanking me. Typically, I don't respond to these responses because that, that's pointless, come on. I say the things I think and I'm happy to give others the last word. I'm not gonna get sucked into some back and forth with some weirdo online. I'm not gonna give them my attention. They can say whatever they want about me. They can think they want, and that's fine. It's not like anything they're saying is interesting enough to respond to. But then, last week, I made a video where I made fun of Caleb Maupin and Jody Brar as the latter said all sorts of wild transphobic shit, and then the former nodded along gormlessly. Now I'll be honest, I hadn't heard of either of these dinguses until I saw a clip from this interview tweeted by the serfs. I thought it made a compelling case for the argument I wanted to make about how class reductionism divides the working class, and the more I looked into it, the more perfect of an example it became, because it turns out Caleb is always palling around with Alexander Dugan, the Nosball guy, the guy who made Nosballs. More on that later. And so what better example of class reductionism can we find than a fascist sympathizing shitlord using the pretense of class to justify bigotry against a marginalized group predominantly composed of working class people? And I thought, you know, He'll probably have something to say about this, but I did not expect the form his response would take, and it has delighted me beyond my wildest expectations. Like Bad Empanada and the serfs before me, links to their responses in the description, I had to go over this video because it's, quite frankly, too funny to ignore. Hey folks, so it's recently come to my attention that a certain internet pseudo-leftist personality who calls himself Thought Slime has decided to target Jyoti Brar, a prominent communist leader, and myself. Um, the reason he's decided to go after us is because he disapproves of something that Jyoti Brar said in an interview I did with her nine months ago. Ah, yes. I targeted them with my insidious disagreement with their point of view. I put a target on his back by disagreeing with the words that someone else said. Now, this is not the first time that someone has tried to paint me as a bigot who advocates further oppression of the transgender community. However, I've always given a pretty clear answer when directly asked about the issue. Take a listen to what happened when Bosch tried to gotcha me and paint me as a transphobe in our recent debate about tankies and their role in the left. How do you feel about transgender people, if I might ask? I think the way that they're, they're treated is awful. Bullying, hate crimes, it's despicable. The way people, you know, have been separated from their families, kicked out of their households. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I feel nothing but empathy for people that are transgender and face all the hate and discrimination on that basis. But you agree that gender reassignment surgery is a valid way of... Um of, uh, of addressing their, you know, a gender dysphoria in many cases. If an right? adult chooses to do that, that's their business. It has nothing to do with me. Okay. Well, uh, I, hate I, crimes, discrimination, bullying is something that any progressive would oppose. I, I, I'm with you on that. Yeah. What about China? Nice try, Vosh. Sneakily trying to get them with a gotcha like that. This is the oldest trick in the book. Here's how this works. Is, is this is how you get people. You ask a question, right? Then what you do is you listen patiently as they respond and kind of just nod and indicate that the answer is better than they expected. And then, right, that's when the trap is sprung and you just move on to another subject. You gotta wake up pretty early in the morning to trick Caleb with that kind of good faith discussion. The thing is, I've always understood the transgender issue to be an issue of human rights. Transgender people are victims of hate crimes very frequently by bigots who somehow feel threatened by their very existence. Transgender people have difficulty finding jobs because of discrimination in employment. Transgender people 
uh, often face being kicked out of their households because their families reject them and don't accept them. Not only have I always taken this position, but I've been quite active around it. Before I was a journalist, when I was an activist, on many occasions I took to the streets of New York City to march for trans rights. In New now, you'll notice that the clip which this thought slime individual objected to was not about whether transgender people should be beaten up and killed, it wasn't about whether they should face discrimination in hiring, it wasn't about whether their families should reject them, it wasn't about any of that. It was about transgender ideology. And honestly, I do not know enough about this topic. I am not well informed enough about the issue of transgender ideology uh, to make a comment on it. Hey Caleb, I don't recall calling you a transphobe in my video. I did take issue with the transphobic arguments someone else made in a video you published. I never meant to insinuate you were a transphobe. I just think you're sympathetic to the arguments transphobes make because you sat and listened and offered no resistance, and also, you're probably a transphobe, but too cowardly to admit it. What do you think is the justification of those human rights abuses? Where do you think that comes from? Why is it, do you think, Caleb, that people discriminate against trans people? Since by your own admission, you're not educated on the subject, let me explain it to you. It comes from the unscientific insistence that people are somehow not the gender they identify with. Our view is, and it's not about people, we're not against a trans person. It's the ideology that's being pushed on people that says, you are what you think you are. This is the root cause of the human rights abuses you care so deeply about. Trans people are excluded from gendered bathrooms on this basis. The Trump administration is keeping them out of homeless shelters on this basis, despite the fact that the trans community is disproportionately homeless because people kick them out of their homes on this basis. Trans panic murders are committed on this basis. And some of the murderers are acquitted on this basis. It's good that you're willing to stand up and fight for trans rights. But if your allyship does not extend to considering trans men to be men, trans women to be women, and non-binary people being valid, then you're just going to bat for the root cause of the oppression you're fighting the symptoms of. People are who they say they are. People understand the reality of their own relationship with gender better than others do. To refer to this as simply transgender ideology insinuates that trans people are indoctrinating people that they're deliberately confusing the issue to suit some sinister agenda. That is, in fact, the claim that Jody Brar made that I took issue with. The claim that you made no effort to dispute or even question. The likes of Mr. Thought Slime try to portray it as if you must be a supporter of imperialism if you are to advocate against the oppression of transgender people. And furthermore, all who defend anti-imperialist and existing socialist states are somehow advocates of harming transgender people. Yeah, man, that's definitely what I think, Caleb. I love imperialism, big fan of imperialism around here. But hypothetically, wouldn't it be embarrassing for you if in the very video you're responding to, I expressly said you had to fight imperialism in order to stand for trans rights? And I think that would look a little something like this. Capitalism is built on white supremacy, it's built on patriarchy, it's built on cis-heteronormativity, on ableism, on settler colonialism, on imperialism. It's an interlocking and mutually reinforcing system. We don't get to pick and choose. You either fight the whole thing, or you're fighting none of it. You're giving quarter to it. Fucking got him! I fucking got him, everybody! Who was the first prominent transgender activist in U.S. history? It was Leslie Feinberg. Leslie Feinberg was a leader of the Workers' World Party, and Leslie Feinberg was a tanky. She was a defender of Cuba, a defender of North Korea, a defender of the Soviet Union and China. She spoke in defense of the Islamic Republic of Iran. She spoke in defense of many governments around the world, and she viewed the transgender struggle as a struggle that was involved with tearing down U.S. imperialism. So, couple things. Boy, Caleb, once again, it'd just be so embarrassing for you if I said that exact thing in my video, the one that you were right now responding to. Leslie Feinberg was by no means the first American prominent transgender activist. The term transgender is relatively modern. She may well have been the first activist to self-identify using that term, I don't know. But there were many trans activists in the United States before her, including at Stonewall, where the modern LGBTQ rights movement was born. 
That being said, Leslie absolutely deserves recognition for her work, which I would never try to take away from her. I never said, and wouldn't say, that all Marxists or all Marxist-Leninists are transphobes, because I don't believe that. I do believe Jodi Brar is, not because she's a Marxist-Leninist, but rather because of all of the transphobic shit she said out loud using her mouth. Now, I'm not a Marxist-Leninist myself, and I tend to actually disagree with a lot of Marxist-Leninist positions, but I'd be willing to bet that the overwhelming majority of Marxist-Leninists would be likewise disgusted by Ms. Brar's comments, which I don't think reflect the popular ML position. Now, I don't know whether what Jyoti Brar said about the ideology being promoted by many transgender activists today is correct or not. I simply don't have the knowledge. I've heard people from both sides of the issue talk, and they, they both say things that are very persuasive. I just don't know enough about it. However, however, even if Jyoti Brar were to be dead wrong about this issue, even if everything she said was completely wrong, that would not take away from the fact that Jyoti Brar is an amazing, heroic, anti-imperialist activist. Seems like you kind of do know, though. Seems like, you know, you do, you do agree with her, otherwise you wouldn't be so mad that I responded to it, and that would make your, your unwillingness to admit that and kind of throw her under the bus in this matter kind of cowardly. Having a good opinion or doing good work in one area does not absolve you of your other shitty opinions. You, you get that, right? Like, I never said Jody Brar is human scum, incapable of ever thinking anything good or doing anything worthwhile ever. I said she got the trans issue wrong because of how she said the words out loud that were wrong. In fact, my whole point was about class reductionism, how various vectors of oppression get collapsed and ignored to focus on a myopic view of class. And now you're arguing that she can't have a bad take about this vector of oppression because she has such good class takes. That's too perfect for words. You're proving my point, Caleb, you little cutie. Is it possible that great revolutionary activists who do great, important, amazing work to oppose capitalism and imperialism can also make mistakes? Yes, it is, but not according to Mr. Thought Slime. If you say one thing that he disagrees with, not about human rights, but rather about ideology, you're a Nazbol, that's what he referred to me as, and not only are you wrong, but you deserve to be beaten up. That's basically what he's arguing here. He would have myself, uh, someone who has been very outspoken in opposing all forms of oppression. He would have Jyoti Brar, a prominent leader of, of communist activists and a woman of color in the United Kingdom, attacked as Red Browns and Nazbols. Huh, no, 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 no. That's a complete misrepresentation. That's not why I called you a Nazbol. It's because you're always palling around with Dugan, the Nazbol guy. I come out of a left background, but I saw uh, Donald Trump speak, and there were many times that he spoke, and I applauded. I heard him talk about how, you know, there's this elite that is not loyal to the United States, these international bankers. I called Jody Brar no such thing. I have no evidence that she's a Nazbol, aside from her agreeing to do an interview with you, which doesn't reflect well in her in that matter. Let me back up here if you're not familiar with Nazbols. Let me show you the Nazbol flag. Hey, does that set off any alarm bells in your mind? That make you think of anything? How about this one? That look familiar? Does that make you think of anything? Does that make you think of any group in history? Nazbols are Nazis with the Soviet aesthetic. I could go into detail about the bizarre philosophy that undergirds this, but it's nonsense made up to justify sneaking fast shit into leftist spaces. It bills itself as a synthesis of fascism and socialism, which means that it's just fascism, but they say bourgeois and proletariat more. Here's Caleb giving a speech about how the left has a culture of weakness. You know, anything that is perceived of as weakness or, or disempowering, that's worshipped. And anything that is conceived of as strength or showing pride in oneself or building up one's strength, that's attacked and that's said, well, that's fascist. Why, who's that jaunty little creep right next to him who's nodding along? Why, it's Alexander Dugan, because they're at a Nazbol conference. So that's why I called you that, Caleb, because you are that thing, very demonstrably. But for full context, let's play the clip where I called for violence against them and discuss whether or not I went too far. Okay, my, my producer is giving me word that I, I didn't actually say that. Um, that's just a thing he made up and then said that I said. Now I need you to fasten your seatbelts, folks, for the next clip because things are about to go off the friggin' rails pretty hard. 
this understanding that I have that sometimes people can take very good progressive views on some issues while being problematic and very wrong on others doesn't simply apply to communists. I have been widely attacked because I will defend and uphold the role played by the black minister Louis Farrakhan. Minister Louis Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam is not a communist and there are things that he has said about Jewish people and about the LGBT community that I vehemently disagree with. Caleb, I, you just got mad that I called you a Nazwal, and then, to defend yourself, you stand a vicious anti-Semite. If you wanted to make the point that otherwise worthwhile figures could have bad social views, or be incidentally bigoted in some way that doesn't really reflect the totality of their work, even if you wanted to specifically go with anti-Semitism as your example, you could have picked Karl Marx, dude. Karl Marx made a few anti-Semitic remarks, but I think most people would agree it's, he's still a pretty worthwhile leftist thinker. Farrakhan hasn't made a few anti-Semitic remarks. He's a Holocaust denier, and he says that satanic Jews control the world and the government. He puts Jews at the center of black oppression. You can't divorce his views from his anti-Semitism. You do not, under any circumstances, gotta hand it to him. But of course, Caleb thinks Farrakhan is great because unlike CIA-funded Trotskyists, he supported Gaddafi. That in 2011, when NATO bombs were falling and Libya faced a bombing and an onslaught at the hands of U.S. imperialism, the Trotskyites were cheering for that intervention. Why? Oh, Gaddafi's a dictator. Gaddafi's a Stalinist. Gaddafi's an imperialist. But here is what Minister Louis Farrakhan, not a communist, said. Why do you hate Gaddafi? Does he share the wealth of Libya with the poor? Now, Gaddafi is a complicated historical figure. He did a lot of good things for Libya. He got people health care and education and all sorts of social benefits. On the other hand, and content warning, there will be some discussion of sexual assault and hate crimes coming up. So skip to the time code here to avoid that. He also had a dungeon where he took abducted citizens to rape and torture them. There are pictures of it, since I know Caleb will attempt to pretend that's just the CIA rumor. He also had gay people publicly flogged, and he crushed dissent of any kind with public executions. And if I were to pick a world leader for whom support was non-negotiable as a socialist, I probably wouldn't go with the guy who was worth 200 billion US dollars at the time of his death. We're only a third of the way through, folks. Just let that sink in, because it's, it gets weirder from here. Just, just watch. This is him explaining how he seems to understand the class struggle. The fact that a small handful of rich ghouls owns most of the money and will all die of starvation and exposure if we don't get some of it, even though we're producing more than we need and throwing away almost half of everything at a time when that overproduction is poised to make our planet uninhabitable, just so that the already unfathomably rich ghouls can have a computer readout that says that their wealth increased by 0.0001%, and the only way that you can get the means of your survival is by throwing yourself into perpetual and worsening exploitation forever? need to worry about making a living and surviving the forthcoming end of the world. While the aforementioned handful of rich ghouls don't. So according to Mr. Thoughtslime, the problem with capitalism isn't that in the pursuit of profits, capitalists are organizing the economy irrationally and that even though the levels of productivity are rising, people are getting further and further into poverty, the problem with capitalism is that there's just too many resources being used. There's... Wh what? What? Caleb, my sweet, sweet summer child, this is such a willful misreading of what I said. Too many people in the world, uh, we all have too much stuff, uh, we're overproducing. That's called Malthusianism. And Malthusianism is an idea that Karl Marx thoroughly refuted. Mr. Thought Slime should read Theories of Surplus Value and read how Karl Marx completely refuted this ideology that there are limited resources in the world and that we're headed towards some kind of apocalypse unless we can drastically reduce the human population and get rid of useless eaters. 
The I, in fact, don't think that the world is overpopulated. I don't think the issue is that people are using too many resources. I very consciously chose the word overproduction, not overconsumption. And that's an indisputable facet of how modern neoliberal industry is fucking over everyone. Things like huge stockpiles of food being thrown away rather than feeding the hungry, fast fashion, manufactured obsolescence, single-use plastics. These are just facts of modern capitalist production, Caleb. My point was never that the world is overpopulated or that we had to get rid of useless eaters. I mentioned overproduction in a rant about how the economy is organized to suit bourgeois interests. The overproduction I'm talking about doesn't feed people. It, in fact, detracts from our ability to feed people. That's the problem. He's just putting words in my mouth here because he can't actually refute the substance of anything I've said. He has to take me out of context while also showing his audience my words in context? Just word to the wise, my dude. You're editing this. If you wanted to make up lies about me, you could just cut out the parts where I demonstrate those lies aren't true. It's, it's simply amazing. But watching this video forces me to ask some more questions about Mr. Thought Slime, his beliefs, and his motivations. Take a look at this part. Me and a black dude might be equally exploited working at a Burger King together. Say you're working at Burger King. Your coworker comes to you because they know you're a big time left though, big time workers' rights kind of person, and they're like, hey, I think I might be trans and I want to start to transition, but I'm really afraid that if I do, I'll lose my job. Hmm. Burger King. Now, I really doubt that Mr. Thought Slime has ever worked in fast food. Well, you got me there, Caleb. I've, I've never worked fast food. But hypothetically, Caleb, wouldn't it be embarrassing for you if I had worked fast food and several other shitty minimum wage jobs and the video right before the video you were responding to was about that? And if within the first few seconds of that video, I mentioned working in fast food specifically for several years? I've had many shitty jobs throughout the years and sometimes I like to make videos about them and this is one of those videos. If you've been following this small series, you'll remember that I worked for a Canadian coffee chain called Tim Hortons. I also worked at a Pizza Hut in a gas station that later was no longer a Pizza Hut in a gas station. However, I did work in fast food when I was a college student. One summer, during my college years, I actually worked at a sandwich shop that was fast food in the Cleveland area near the college I went to. And I'll Caleb, don't you think it'd just be humiliating for you if rather than touring working class life for one summer in college, I in fact worked in such jobs for over a decade to survive? Wouldn't that embarrass you? Wouldn't that make you look like a real asshole? Caleb intuits that I've never worked in fast food for me saying the word burger in a funny way. That's his evidence. From that, he can draw a conclusion. Hmm. Burger King. He is a professional journalist, everyone. The thing is, it's a joke. I look to put jokes in my video so that they're fun to watch instead of just ranting into a webcam for half an hour getting madder and madder at a version of my opponent I made up. Say you're working at Burger King. Your coworker comes to you because they know you're a big time left though, big time workers' rights kind of person. And they're like, hey, I think I might be trans and I want to start to transition, but I'm really afraid that if I do, I'll lose my job. Hmm. And I'll tell you one thing. The last thing that I ever did when I was working, uh, assembling hamburgers and running the fryer at a fast food place was to talk to my coworkers about their gender identity. Uh, we weren't sitting there and having group therapy and talking about discrimination or how we felt about our gender identities. We were being driven to work harder and harder and harder. Ah, see, you, you did learn to edit me out of context. You're, you're getting there, buddy. The example I was giving there was of a situation where someone might build solidarity in the workplace and how your sneering condescension to workers would not do that. When I worked at those kind of jobs, we often had deep probing conversations. Like, we weren't allowed to, we weren't supposed to, but when you're a vaguely sociable human being, other people just kind of open up to you if you spend hours a day with them. About their home lives, their love life, their sexuality, it all just kind of came up. Maybe no one discussed those things with you because you seem like a real asshole who wouldn't listen or treat them with respect if they did. Which is why, in the example I gave that you very cleverly edited to disguise that fact, I said that the solution to the problem was to build solidarity. Behold, the viewing globe. 
Say you're working at Burger King. Your coworker comes to you because they know you're a big time lefto, big time workers' rights kind of person. And they're like, hey, I think I might be trans and I want to start to transition, but I'm really afraid that if I do, I'll lose my job. Which of the following responses is more likely to get that person involved in the struggle against capitalism? A. I'll support you however I can. As workers, we have to stick together because our bosses will seek to divide us. I'll do whatever it takes to protect your rights. How can I help? Or B. No. You're delusional. You're oppressed in this job and that's the one thing that matters. Read Marx. According to this pseudo-leftist milieu, if you talk about working people, if you talk about class struggle, if you rant against the billionaires and bankers and monopolists that rule the world, you're a fascist. According to them, working class is a fascist buzzword. According to them, working families is somehow a discriminatory phrase. Yep, yeah, you got me again, Caleb. But hypothetically, wouldn't it be embarrassing for you. Liberals will use the term class reductionism to just mean like someone who talks about class and that's bullshit and that's not what it is. When I use the term class reductionist, I'm not necessarily calling anyone a bigot. I'm not saying you're a bad person or a bad leftist necessarily. I think it's a thing that anyone can just do sometimes, myself included. For them, socialism is about the individuality of artists and middle class intellectuals and them standing up against the mob of inferior rabble who don't go to NYU to learn about these abstract gender theories that you must immediately agree with or else you're the equivalent of Adolf Hitler. Caleb, I went to Memorial University of Newfoundland because the tuition was the cheapest there and it was all I could afford at the time. I didn't study abstract gender theory, but I did live in constant fear that people would discover my secret longing to express a different gender than the one I was assigned at birth. Because that's, this isn't actually an abstract issue for me. It's, it is for you, and, and not me. So, there's that. Okay, get ready, get ready everyone, because if you gave me a million years, I'd never think of an ending this dipshit. It just, just observe. I think the best way to understand the difference between this individual and myself is simply to look at the name that he gave himself, Thought Slime, and the image in the background of his video. Mr. Thought Slime has this image of slime, green gross slime, pouring out of a sewer behind him the whole time he is speaking. Working people are trying to get rid of slime. They are trying to get rid of dirt. They don't like the fact that, you know, the infrastructure of the United States is falling apart, that our roads and bridges are in decay. That, uh, that our water is being contaminated with lead, that opioids and drugs are taking the lives of working people in big numbers, that there's hopelessness and despair among working people, uh, that so much poverty is taking place. They don't like that. Working people want to get to a better life. And that is the difference. Folks, there's a reason that the CIA, at the same time, it was covertly funding Trotskyites and anti-communist leftists with its Congress for Cultural Freedom program. Also covertly funded the work of Jackson Pollock and tried to marginalize the school of art known as social realism. So many countries have broken free from capitalism. And when they've done it, they haven't tried to make their countries more slimy and gross. They haven't put up paintings of abstract art and Jackson Pollock. Instead, they have built some of the most beautiful cities, some of the most beautiful subway systems, the most beautiful gardens that you've ever seen. Working people are trying to get out of the slime. First of all, I take great umbrage with you saying that the slime behind me is disgusting. It's not. People often say that they want to eat the slime. I don't blame them. It looks like Ecto Cooler. It looks delicious. How dare you? You know what? Fine. If that's what it takes to get through to you, fine. I'll conform to the same bourgeois respectability standard that you think is working class for some reason. Mr. Caleb Malpin would have you believe that to argue with someone, you simply have to invent a position that they could hold and then argue with that. Well, I disagree. I think it's better to argue with the positions that a person actually holds, which is why I always state my positions clearly. 
I believe that trans men are men, trans women are women, non-binary people are valid. I don't consider this to be an abstract ideological position, but rather the basis for the material oppression of trans and gender non-conforming people. Mr. Maupin seems unwilling to state his position on the subject, and I have a suspicion as to why that is. He believes that if he obscures the issue, makes it out to be some inscrutable ideological position that he couldn't possibly hope to untangle without some liberal college education, you'll let him off the hook. Surely, though, you do understand that you, Caleb, are the gender you feel that you are. Surely, you understand how insulting and hurtful it would be if everyone else decided you were a woman and treated you as such. This isn't a highfalutin idea, it's about as simple as it gets. But even if I were to accept his excuse, that he's simply uneducated on the subject, and thus does not want to comment, why then did he platform Miss Brar's comments on the subject in the first place, knowing that many, as he said, would consider them to be hate speech? You also talked about you know being accused of hate speech, and I've noticed increasingly there is a lot less tolerance for different views in left circles. I mean, just everything you've said here would be grounds to get you banned from various left-wing conventions or gatherings. I mean, you know, someone could even, I've even heard people advocate violence against people who, who state such things. And Why would he not look into why that is? If this is a matter of simply being uneducated, why didn't he educate himself further before defending what Ms. Brar said? Defending her points while making clear that he has no position on the subject himself is, in my opinion, cowardly. And this points to the key ideological difference between someone like Mr. Caleb Maupin and myself. I don't believe you can draw a neat little line between bigoted ideology and the material results of that ideology. I'm sure Mr. Maupin will have all sorts of ridiculous claims in how he chooses to respond to this video, but if he is to be honest in this discussion, he must be pressed to answer one specific question. Are trans women women? Are trans men men? Are non-binary people valid? Unless he can answer in the affirmative, he is upholding the bigoted and oppressive view that holds back trans workers, and can't meaningfully be said to be an advocate of the working class without putting an asterisk next to the term. Hello and welcome to the Eyeball Zone. Here in the Eyeball Zone, the eyeballs cleanse and here in the eyeball zone, the eyeballs cleanse, and Lord Oculon casts a long shadow from cradle to grave over small leftist content creators who need eyeballs on their work. Folks, no fucking around this time. Let's go with the meat and potatoes discussion of gender from David J. Bradley, where he talks about how masculinity came to be in crisis, what that means, how it affects dudes and non-dudes alike, and how gendered expectations can feed directly into toxic masculinity. It goes into Judith Butler's performative gender theory, which I touched on in the previous video, but didn't really go into detail about because I was rushing. Do you have a small leftist project you'd like to see featured here in the eyeball zone? Send me no more than one email to thoughtslimeeditor at gmail.com with pertinent information like your pronouns, and perhaps you will be trapped here in the eyeball zone. Well, thanks for watching another kooky old video of mine, everybody. What a character, this Caleb. I bet he's going to have something to say about this, but I... <laughs> what a doof... What a doofus. If you like this video, you know, press the like button or whatever. I don't even care, you know? It's whatever. Uh, subscribe, also. Not that it's a big deal to me. Not that I like you or anything. Why am I doing it this way? If you like the video, why not press that like button? It's easy to do. It's good for you. You can also subscribe here for new videos every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you'd like more videos from me, why not check out youtube.com slash scaredycatstv where I talk about horror movies or youtube.com slash mega slime entertainment zone where I play video games. You can also watch me on live streams every 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursdays. I stream on both YouTube and Twitch. It's a secret to everyone. If you'd like to give me money for whatever reason, and people seem to like to do that, and who am I to stop them? You can do that at patreon.com slash thoughtslime. And I appreciate each and every one of you deeply. I don't know why I said it in that weird way. That was kind of rude. Hey, I hope you have a beautiful day. I hope you all get all the hugs and kisses that you want, but only from people that are within your current quarantine bubble so that you don't get the Rona. And I hope all of your wishes come true, unless you have evil wishes, in which case I hope someone stops you before it's too late.